Hello everyone, welcome to my podcast. I'm joined by Tom Davis today, so I'm absolutely delighted. We're here at the Irish Club. Um, so first of all, Tom, I'll start with your time as a young player. Did you always know you were going to be a centre-back? You were always quite a big lad. Uh, no, actually, I, uh, I started off in midfield uh, when I was a young kid, um, and then I went to United at uh, eight, sorry, and um, they converted me into a right-back. Um, I was not as big as I am now, I was quite quite small and then um, went to Blackburn until uh, I was 16 and I was a right back there as well, um, behind people like Phil Jones, he was in my team and he was a centre half and, and then um, I sort of left Blackburn at 16 and just shot up, I went from say 5'8", five, 5'9", five, I was 6 foot 2 before I could blink and then um, when I started playing proper men's football that's when uh, People would look at me and say, right, big man, you're centre half now. And uh, so it's been, in terms of my whole career, it's been quite recent that I've uh, I've become a centre half. But uh, I don't think I could uh, play anywhere else now. Mm-hmm. Well, it's the sign for Man United. That must have been a sort of a dream come true as an eight-year-old. Yeah, that was uh, that was unbelievable for me and, and my family. Uh, it was something that I'd always wanted to do was play for United, and albeit being such a young age, it was something that was quite special to me and. Uh, special to my dad. I think it was the first time I ever saw my dad cry when I signed that day. So it was, um, yeah, it was a nice moment, and I've had some good memories there, and did some really like special things over those four years. And um, obviously, I'm quite a way off that now, but I can look back on that uh, like very fondly. And obviously, was it Accrington that you were uh, spent time with Accrington? Yeah, I uh, first. Firstly, went to Fleetwood when I first signed professional, uh, and didn't make an appearance there under uh, under Graham Alexander. Um, but then got got the chance to stay in the league and go to Accrington, which was which was massive for me at the time. And um, obviously, I made a had a good season there, and we did quite well. And um, that sort of has stood me in good stead for the rest of my uh, professional career. And you joined Portsmouth. Tell me about your time at Portsmouth. Yeah, um, from from Aki, uh, went straight to Portsmouth under under Paul Cook and uh, it was a difficult time for me. Uh, I was living at home when I was at Accrington and um, everything was just seemed, I take, took everything in stride and then uh, moving three and a half, four hours from home and um, not playing as much as I wanted to, it was tough and um, obviously I sp- since, since it's happened I've spoke to people and they've said that it's obviously um, you've learned from it and you've improved from it and at the time it wasn't nice but now that I'm here at Coventry it's something that I can um, Use the experiences that I had down in Portsmouth and hopefully make me a better player and a better person. Mm-hmm. Portsmouth that season promoted. Was that something that's really helped you this season? Yeah, it's uh, even though I didn't play as much as I wanted to, it is something that you can use to uh, to to your benefit and to the lads' benefit in the change room. Uh, there was times last year when, when well, even when I was at Portsmouth, we were third going into the final day. And um, we ended up winning the league. So there was times when we dropped out of the playoffs last year, and the lads were warming and on about where we were going to finish. And it was, it was just like relax, keep it going, because uh, we had we had such a good a good team last year. And even though we didn't have much momentum, a couple of wins on the bounce and it could propel you up to the automatic places. So it was um, yeah, it's definitely something that you can use, and um, it's the memories that you have when you get promoted is something that will live with you forever. So uh, even though my time at Portsmouth wasn't wasn't the best time uh, in terms of playing. It's something that I do have uh, great memories from and something that I look back on fondly. And obviously, after the season, Portsmouth, did you get a feeling you might be moving on that transfer window? Yeah, it was it was something that I wanted to make happen. Um, it was not not a sense that I wanted to be at home, but I wanted to be somewhere where I felt more comfortable and that I could an environment that would would be best for me to play football and and. Um, at first, it was looking like I was going to move towards London, and then uh, late on, I got the call from from commentary, and it sounds cliche, but it just it was just perfect fit for me. It was a uh, a big club, with good ambition, and uh, a lot closer to home. So it was uh, something that I jumped at, and um, I came in, got it done quickly, and um, again, the last season was some I've, I've played I played an amount of football last year, but it's not not enough. Um, for someone I, ambitious as me, I wanted to play a lot more football, and um, whether that be since not being selected or injury, that's just something that happened last year. And um, but at the end of the day, we all got where we wanted to be, and um, ho- 
hopefully this season and play a lot more games and uh, have another successful year. Mark Robbins signed you on deadline day. Is that something that's a bit a deadline day signing? Is that really chaotic for the player? Um, or done very rushed? It, it was quick. Um, I first heard about the interest about two days before deadline day, and um, I was I was up in Manchester on a night out actually, um, so I had to fly back down to Portsmouth, collect all my stuff, then come up to Coventry. So I was uh, in the hotel at the Rico on the Tuesday. Um, signed that day and then it got announced the next day so it was it was really quick and um, it's, it is nerve wracking because you sort of don't know where you're going to be and you're not sure if it's going to happen and that's the case with a lot of my friends now in football who there's eight or nine days left of the window now and some of them are still not sure if they're, where they're going to be and it's a tough time and but it's something that happens as a footballer and over the, over the years you get used to it and um, thankfully for me it was one that worked out and um, yeah, I'm glad that uh, the gaffer gave me the opportunity. And when you obviously you joined, joined quite a young squad, is that something that ever potentially worried you about um, lack of experience? I don't think it worried me really. I, I didn't really think about me being one of the more senior players until I got in the change room and you sort of look around and think, oh, I'm, I'm now, more, we do young be old sometimes on the teams and I'm, I'm one of the first to get a bib on the old team and it's a bit worrying, but um, no. That's just something that I've I've got experience now in the game of um, promotions and stuff like that, and hopefully that um, I can bring that to the rest of the squad because we do have a young team. There's mainstays in our team who are 19, 20, 21 years old and um, really good players, but maybe lack a bit of the experience and the know-how, and that's down to myself and people with more experience in the team to help them walk through. Joining a club as big as Coventry, were you ever worried about the fan base or? No, not really. I. Uh, I had that experience down in Portsmouth and you've sort of got to um, learn to let it just, just run off your back sort of thing. It's, it's something that you're always going to get. You're going to get a, a, a number of fans who aren't your biggest fan or who don't think you should be playing for their team and um, that, that's that's just what happens in football but um, fortunately since I've come in the fans have been brilliant with me and um, taking a shine to me so um, that's, hopefully we repaid them last year and hopefully it's something that we can uh, continue with next year. And you had there's also four very senior centre backs that are all in there around the squad. Is that something that strives makes you strive to be the number one centre back? Yeah, um, can't I, it's again it's a cliche but competition's healthy and um, I feel that whenever the centre backs who've gone in have played they've all done well and um, it's down to down to me or down to whoever when they're in to get the to, to when they've got the shirts to keep it and uh, I'm no different at all so uh, hopefully I can after the first game which I'm banned for hopefully I can uh, keep staying the gap of thoughts and um, keep that shirt for the remainder of the season. And it's been very frustrating for you at the time when you seem to sustain a place in the team to then break your collarbone on yeah. the screen. It, yeah it was annoying um, but uh, that's just that's just football. Uh, the kind of challenges that I go for, things like that, are going to happen, and um, it was it was a frustrating time. And um, I think that it maybe put a halt to what could have been a, a really good season for me personally. But it's part of part of football, and hopefully um, this season, such would there won't be any of those. And having Mickey Doyle in the um, changing room, so you were with him at Portsmouth, but is he? Obviously, there's all everyone says that he is that real leader and everything. But is it quite a shock to the system when you first sort of meet him and he's shouting at everyone? Yeah, it's uh, definitely is. I've I've uh, I've never met a person like Doyle, and uh, that's that's not a, that's not a bad thing at all. He just he wants the best out of everyone and he wants the best for himself. And um, he's had two promotions in the last two years and things like that. That's a testament to him and. Um, yeah, it, it was a shock when I first met him, and we did, we, me and him over a couple of years have had a few to do sort of thing. But um, I think we're both quite similar in, in what we want, and we're both a bit uh, like the more physical side of the game. And um, but you just you learn from people like that. You've got to take things that he does and understand them, and hopefully add them to your game as well. And uh, that's what me and the rest of the lads uh, respect about him, and hopefully we have learned a lot from him. Joining a club like Coventry last season, did you feel that the club was definitely way too big for that division? Um, yeah, you, you can tell there's a, a, a feel around the place that they, they do deserve to be back up championship, if not even further than that. And um, that's why it's a, it's a great place to come on a journey because you do feel like you are all striving towards a, a, the same thing. And um, 
that's that's a nice thing to have where you've got a lot of lads in the change room who all want to achieve a common goal and and that helps that you all put pulling in the same direction there there's no uh, there's no real egos in the change room at the moment there's no real lads who feel like they're better than the club at all and it's nice it's a nice place to be and um, as I said I keep saying that we we achieved that last season hopefully that we can uh, do it again this season and, go, and there's no reason why we shouldn't be going for another promotion and obviously there was times last season where it looked like promotion was going to start becoming unlikely was there a real moment in the season when everyone was a bit down um, yeah there, there was times like I said before where lads were umming and ahhing about where, where we were going to finish and um, if we were going to get to where we wanted to be but um, that's where your doilers and people like that they came into, came to the fore and they were just telling the lads that if we stick together put a few wins together um, there was a there was a crucial period we lost a few games on the spin um, and we needed them to proper get together and get a few results and we managed it and then um, going into the playoffs we were we were on a, a bit of a high and a bit of, with a bit of momentum and um, as soon as we made the playoffs I just I just didn't see anyone else beating us and that was a nice thing to have so uh, you need you need the belief so when you when the lads are feeling a bit down or is there's a bit of a negativity you need you need that belief and that sort of siege mentality which we had the uh, end of last year and we'll, we'll need again this year a lot of fans have said that Mansfield Town away was the turning point in the yeah. season. Do you agree with that? Um, I wasn't there. I think I was. I was a fan, or I was injured or something. I must have been injured. Um, but I remember. Uh, is that when Willis went off? Willis went off early. Yeah. yeah. And I remember watching the score and thinking, "Oh, we're in for it here." But credit to the lads, and uh, I think John scored a penalty, did he? So um, yeah, and to get a point now with ten men after fifteen minutes was was incredible. I remember thinking, "It's not going to happen here," but. Um, Things like that, and that that just galvanises the team and brings belief. And it's um, yeah, little moments like that in the season, you think, oh, it's just a point, but it can be a massive point come the end of the season. It's clear to the fans that it's quite a tight group of players at the minute. Everyone's sort of very friendly. Is that something that you could see being an uh, like an advantage in the playoffs because everyone's so close and tight? Yeah, you uh, you obviously you you do it because it's your job, but you you you're working for your mates as well and. Um, you're going to go the extra yard if the person alongside you is, is your mate and um, there, there's a lot of tight friendships in the group and as a team we, we do seem to get on quite well and that that's massive like um, I've been in teams like when I was at Accrington that was a close group and we probably didn't have the best team in the league but we, we managed to finish fourth and just miss out on promotion again and um, those those things are massive so um, I think that'll be another big factor this year um, we've obviously got a lot of quality um, but the fact that we all are playing for each other as well and we all get on um, will be a big factor and something that we can uh, hopefully use to our advantage. And moving on to this season, is losing Mark McNulty, is that a real big thing that's hit the the, 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 the dressing room? Um, yeah, he, he was a good lad around the place, Sparky, and um, he was a big character and and then obviously he's um, 28 goals is going to be hard to replace, but um, we as, as we, we have got a tight group and the lads who have come in have gelled really well and um, it's it's nice to have some fresh faces sometimes as well just to give everyone a sort of lift uh, the goals will be tough to replace but I'm, I know the gaffer's got a, a plan in place to uh, bring a couple in and um, I'm sure when the season starts we'll be uh, in the in the good position to I don't know, hit the ground running I suppose Has there been a signing that's come in that's really impressed you in training this year? Um, it's hard to pinpoint really, everyone's got different attributes, so I'd say uh, Junior and Abs coming in from Shrewsbury, they've got that winning mentality which is which is good, which you need. Um, there's, I think over the years at Coventry there's been a, a sort of, um, peop that, that some of the players have been like accepting losses um, because the club's been on such a decline, it's just become the norm to lose and I think the gap has recruited well over the last couple of years, getting lads who, who are used to winning and if you're not winning then you're not happy. So. Um, I think bringing in the lads from Shrewsbury is good, and um, they can just they can give us that extra bit of grit and and determination to uh, when we're going to a tougher league next year. There seems to be a real big squad depth this season now as well, with lots and lots of positions that are going to be looked like there's going to be a lot of fight from lots of quality players. Yeah, which is good. Um, you can't just stand still in football. You've got to uh, you've got to move with the times. And we uh, we obviously had a lot of quality players in every position last year, but that doesn't say you don't need to add to it. Um, there can be injuries. There can be dips in form throughout the season, and if you've not got quality coming in, then you're gonna you're gonna struggle. So, um, 
I think the gaffers are pretty well. I think there's a couple more to add. Um, and hopefully we'll go to the next season flying and there's no reason why we uh, can't be up challenging again. Is there a particular away game you're looking forward to this season? Um, I'm looking forward to going back to Patton Park, to be honest. Um, there's a few... There's a few, there's a few big teams in the league, Charlton teams like that, and that they're going to be good away days. But um, I think we're we're as a big attraction as anyone in that league, and people will be looking forward to coming to the Rico. And um, we've got to make sure that the Rico is somewhere where it's sort of a fortress, and we we can both steamroll teams at our place, and then hopefully pick up some points on the road as well. So um, there's no point in looking over your shoulder or looking around the league, worrying or thinking, oh, I can't wait to play there because I think we're as as I said, a bigger, as big an attraction as anyone. So, um, yeah, I think we we can uh, go into the season with our heads held high and knowing that we're going to do well. And playing at the Hawthorns on Saturday was that quite a good experience for you? Yeah, it's uh, it gives you a taste of what life can be like, I suppose, if you uh, you get that far. And um, they were they were a good team. They uh, especially first half they played well, and it was um, it was an experience and a learning curve for the lads uh, to know what the levels like and. Um, we're not going to play teams like that every week next season, which is which is uh, nice to know. But the um, at least we can uh, we've sort of got a yardstick of where we're at, and it will be a tough week this week getting ourselves ready for ready for Saturday. And um, obviously you going to Alicante at the start of pre-season. How was that? Um, it was a really good week. Um, obviously that's good for the new lads coming in. They get a chance to sort of spend a lot of quality time with, with each other and sort of bed themselves in a. It was a tough week. There was a lot of uh, a lot of running and a lot of a lot of training, um, but it's what you need, and the facilities are good, um, so it's um, it's a good environment to, to work in. And um, yeah, we we had a good laugh, and it was um, and just you're going to reap the rewards. Maybe not the next couple of weeks, but come Christmas early next year, you'll you'll feel fit and you'll feel strong. And that's uh, down to the uh, AD and the gaffer working us hard in pre season and making us uh, right for the, for the long season. You scored your first goal in pre-season against Everton and the 23s. Yeah. Is that something you can hope you can add to your game this season as well? Yeah, I've uh, got a little bit on with ADV Vash that I'm going to score a few this season. So, I've um, yeah, hopefully if I can get in the right positions and the delivery's right, then we'll uh, we'll score a few goals. But um, as a as a back four five, we didn't really score many last season, and the gap has been in our air a bit because we do we do do a lot of set pieces and. Um, it's something that we need to add to our game, so hopefully I can uh, chip in myself with a, with a couple of goals. And Tom Bayliss is looking quite likely that he's going to sign a new deal or stay for this season. Is that something that motivates the rest of you, seeing that he's clearly saying, come on, we can do this this year? Yeah, um, obviously Tom will have had interest from from higher leagues, but um, there's no no reason to say that Coventry's not the best place to, for him to develop and keep on developing. He's, he's going to have an uh, unbelievable career in the game. and. When you see people with that quality and that uh, sort of ambition staying at Coventry or looking at the staying at Coventry, and um, it's obviously good for the change room and um, good for the team. So it's credit to Tom. He's obviously got the right people around him, uh, giving him sound advice, and um, yeah, he's going to be another. If he stays, he'll be a uh, massive player for us this season. Having an academy as good as Coventry does, that's something that really benefits the club. Do you think? Um, of course, yeah, you do. Um, see the see the lads coming through and there's obvious quality. The 23 have got a have got a great team as well and um, they're obviously chomping at the bit to get into the first team squad and um, it's it's brilliant when the gaffer brings in a big name or a big signing. But it's just as nice to see the kids coming through and and doing well. And I think there's um, a few waiting in the wings there who maybe this season or the season after will be uh, pushing us for our spots in the team. Um, moving on to sort of your social media. Personality. So where, where does that all come from? The, the banter across social media. Um, I don't know really. It's something that I've always, I've always liked to sort of interact with the fans and that. Um, and it's just, it's just nice that the Coventry fans have sort of jumped on it and, and enjoyed themselves. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a good laugh. We've got, a, we've got a few of us on there who, who like a bit of a joke and that. And um, it's, it's just, it's just proves what a nice place it is that you can interact with the fans and the fans. Um, enjoy it so much with the players and it's uh, sort of nice to have that connection so it's uh, something that hopefully uh, it carries on this season and um, everyone yeah, enjoys a bit of the banter online. And your little catchphrase, all the best for the season, yeah. where does that originate from? I don't know, I don't know where that came from but I use that in uh, so many contexts now it's sort of, uh, yeah it's outgrown me now, there's a few more people that use it as well so um, yeah it's a good one and 
Um, but that's just that's just uh, a bit of a laugh, yeah, and uh, it's good that the Coventry fans enjoy it too. Yeah. <laughs>